Thank you, Chair. Just to let you know, I used to be in a rock band indeed, 20 years ago. And in those days, you know, intellectual property was something we were passionate about. And it was a construct for legal firms and a few lawyers. And it was very difficult really to manage your IP. And coming out of the Faculty of Law, Cape Hill in 1999, you know, when we clamored for IP and how we could really help SMEs or artists. And fast forward in now where you have the Super Bowl. Who watched the Super Bowl last night? And who watched the Super Bowl halftime show? More importantly, ah, there you go in the back there. Yeah, because Rehana was amazing with bumping into and gave such a performance during the Caribbean Pro. And this is what the creative industries, the digital trade and economy is about. Rehana's brand, Fenty's billion dollar brand. What underpins that brand? Intellectual property, not the brick and mortar assets, but the worth of that intangible collateral asset. And how has she exploited it? Using digital trade online being able to exploit the Madrid Protocol in 125 countries and going. Caribbean members and Commonwealth members are members of the Madrid Protocol where with that brand, Fenty, you have access to all those countries, one language, one currency, payments, all done online. In Trinidad and Tobago, we are looking at the Global Carnival Showcase and I'm coming home for Carnival, right? So Carnacon, a, a global carnival showcase, looking at our best ways of franchising the carnival, using the Madrid protocol, using designs, talking about IP, and having this exported to, through our what? Our trade, our British Economic Partnership Agreements, the European Union Economic Partnership Agreement, and taking it to the world. So IP. You know, I want to recognize my permanent secretary, Ms. Natasha Barrow of the Ministry of the Attorney General and Legal Affairs, and the Honorable Attorney General of St. Vincent, just to let you know, sir, that, you know, the, the St. Vincent and Grenadines and intellectual property is doing amazing, you know, and my colleague, Lakeisha, we have many conversations and just looking at UPOV, another aspect of IP, and how you're looking at that for even cannabis, as you know, new plant variety protection. So IP, the expressed creations of the human mind, right? Mm -hmm. The Secretary General earlier spoke about chat and he used chat, an artificial intelligence device to write his speech. Do you think that that would attract IP, meaning an artificial intelligence generator um, can have intellectual property? and be owned because there are cases on that now being argued whether AI should be afforded IP or should it be traditional um, owners of intellectual property? Any takers? Not yet, so I'll go through because I have 15 minutes for this presentation. And so it's sponsored by GEICO, 15 minutes for insurance. <laughs> right, so here we are, right? I wanna talk about this beautiful macaque, right? This beautiful macaque, Naruto, he, his photographer friend, Mr. David Slater, the human being, was taking photographs and then he decided to actually press the photograph, the camera, and take these most perfect, perfect still shots of himself. And the Society for the Prevention of the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Peter decided, hey, the Naruto selfies, we can exploit the copyrights because Naruto should be able to own his IP. What do you think about that? Is it that he should be able to own his IP or an AI device like chat should own IP? Well, guess what? The judge found that intellectual property is not monkey's business, as beautiful as he is. It's the express creations of the human mind. So inherent in what I've said is the definition, right? So there you go. There was an agreement by Mr. Slater that you know, he, from the proceeds of the copyright, he would give back to the sanctuaries for the macaques. So it was a win-win situation. Moving along, the types of IP. So in my 15 minute presentation, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about trademarks. I've spoken about it, Rihanna's brand, the Carnacon Global Carnival Showcase. 
We could think of so many brands in our region and in the Commonwealth that have done well. In fact, in Trinidad and Tobago right now, we are in the process of protecting the trademark for the Commonwealth Games Youth Games that is coming later this year. And looking at merchandise and all these things that will encompass the intellectual property. Because IP, what is it? It's the air that we breathe. Inventions, patents. Somebody told me, you know, it's a very difficult construct. It has to be novel, have an inventive step. It has to be useful. And it seems to be the forte of corporations. Well, in this global digital economy, you can have SMEs. You can have individuals who have successfully been able to get patent protection. And some of my slides, I'll go through that. Industrial designs, the ornamental aspect of an article. Some of the perfume bottles that the permanent secretary uses, for instance, with these unique shapes are protected by IP. Closer to home, you have the chubby bottle, SM Jalil. I see we have aqua here. The chubby bottle with its unique shape is protected by intellectual property. As I've said, it's the air we breathe, right? It's all around us. And then you have GIs, you know. This is so important in the digital environment, whether it's a Trinitario Coco, Jamaica's Blue Mountain Coffee, Demerara Sugar, and so many other examples in the Commonwealth, looking at our inherent agricultural products from our agricultural regions with unique characteristics. That's what geographical indications are. And when you ring fence it into a strategy and then you go through a digital trade, basically you're bringing our culture, what we do best to the world, especially in the Commonwealth, rich in culture from South Africa, where I've been, Zimbabwe, with so many cultural products, right? And of course, the old man on this side, I call him an old man, copyright and related rights. Why? Copyright protects what? Original literary, dramatic, and artistic works, music, and neighboring rights. So in one catchphrase there, you have what copyright encompasses, such a rich milieu of protection available. So, you know, we're talking about FinTech here. Right here in Barbados, there's successful FinTech companies of research carry land. So what goes into these things? You have brands, it protects against infringement and somebody came with something similar sounding to that FinTech brand. It assists with due diligence and trademarks. And very, very importantly, a trademark could be licensed, could have exclusive distributorships, and also it, you can also protect it across the board in different areas. So what makes a trademark unique? Well, I'll give you an example of what is not unique. The best fish cakes. I thought that one there was pretty good that we just had, right? But if I was trying to apply for the brand, the best fish cakes, will I get that? No. The Attorney General nods quite correctly. You know, the Honorable Attorney General. Or the best doubles closer to home. It does not identify itself as a source identifier of goods. 20 years ago, our lawyers wanted to be, have blackberries you know, and now I have got two iPhones, right? Would you believe? One for work and want to keep the time in my 15 minute speech that I've had to truncate, right? So, you know, trademarks, a sign that is graphically represented. That's the modern language, right? And in that, you can have trademarks for your image, your caricature, you can have song trademarks, you can have touch trademarks. And you could even, you have the traditional slogans. So how are we going to unlock in rock star fashion or hard fat fashion to borrow bungee stem? Because we're in carnival time. You know, the power of IP to really take our culture in the region and the Commonwealth to the world, right? Patents, protecting technology, trade secrets. You all know about the Angostura bitters. It's one of the best kept trade secrets. What keeps it secret? Contracts, how they set it up. Right, And it's very important, sometimes in the restaurant industry, our chefs with their trade secrets, many of them get what you call sweat equity, sweating over the fire, but you made a part owner because of the importance of the intellectual property in those trade secrets and what it brings to the value of that um, corporation, that restaurant. And of course, copyright, you know, fintechs, you know, what makes that proprietary software unique? the copyright protection for the source code, as opposed to maybe 
you know, soft source code that would be in the public domain that everybody could use. So this gives you an advantage, intellectual property. Once you use it and learn to use it, it gives you an advantage for your SMEs, for the governments that unlock the regulatory clauses that are so important. And you know, we have come a long way from 95 and 96 when TRIPS came along, trade-related aspects of IP. And we put all of these in the IP offices in the Caribbean and in many Commonwealth countries into the law. The TRIPS provisions, including in Trinidad and Tobago in 1997 that birthed the Intellectual Property Office. So when you follow the TRIPS provisions, you would see very important articles that can be used, such as the Geneva Act for our, our, our unique shapes of articles, industrial designs, where you have access to 80 countries. So you need packaging from the Caribbean being able to protect. And I spoke about the Madrid or even the e-filing for patents. E-filing services are all there for IP. Think of it. We in the IP office of Trinidad and Tobago now have over 500 SMEs signed up with online accounts. They file and they can pay for their mark in five minutes. And this is where unlocking the potential of IP has to go. Thank you. Geico is now cut by a third. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, I can. So trademarks, rituals, the story of Mario Sabgerbu. How did this happen? I was the legal counsel for an firm at the time. And it was said coffee could not work in the Caribbean. But he persisted and, you know, we did some distributorship agreements. And then he was looking for a name. He went to his wife, a partner like many of us might go for inspiration. Mr. Khan, I think definitely inspiration there. Yes. And she said, Mario, what does coffee mean to you? And he simply replied, it's my ritual. Back in those days, rituals was born. You had to go through 35 offices, go to 35 different lawyers. Lawyers are important, but not so important, H.E. <laughs> and different um, translations and these to be able to take this to the region. Now, with the Madrid Protocol, if we accede to it, Trinidad Tobago is a member, Jamaica, Suriname is, has acceded, Antigua and Barbuda was the first, and we need more Caribbean countries to really look at this and unlock it. Cuba also is a member in our region. So this brand has gone throughout the hemisphere, right? And it has all of these assets used as a sign of endorsement, enabling licensing, et cetera. Very powerful trademark in the region, right? And I spoke about the best doubles. This is your slide. So I don't need to speak, right? Make sure it doesn't designate the kind, quality, or purpose. A hotel for five star, no, would not be protected as a trademark, you know? But you can have elusive marks, right? A great example of trademark I spoke about, Carnacon, the Global Carnival Showcase. So. Here, if you look at this slide, which will be for everyone, it kind of gives a guide as to how to look at brands, you know, and looking at trademarks because this is FinTech and different areas of new technologies, you know, I've pulled this from the database of the IP office of Trinidad and Tobago, where it has been registered PAPR, which is owned by TSTT for downloadable e-wallets for provision of online marketplace for buyers, electronic funds transfer. It was hot off the press and um, it was the, the license was granted just last week. So the IP office is your best tool. It keeps all your secrets, literally, and it has to, and it has to work in tandem with your economy. So because it'll take one slip up and then, you know, you launch your brands, et cetera, you're on the back foot and then you're calling the lawyers and the lawyers have to be like Mahoons at the Super Bowl last night, right? So... Look at the junction. You know what this does? I'm coming home for carnival, like some of us. The junction literally connects you to all the mass bands in Trinidad and Tobago, and it's doing, you know it. You're shaking your hand. Great. Yeah, you're shaking your head there. Yeah, it connects you to all your mass bands. If you're lost, you can go back to one. If you want to wine in our next band, sorry, that's a trendy term, uh, you can even find the other bands. It also connects all the parties, helps you with ride share services, bringing the carnival together through e-commerce platform the brand protected, the source code protected by contract and all of these things. This is IP, IP in motion, you know? This is what it's about. 
And then this is the junction here they latest at. We have what you're looking for. Very interesting slogan, right? Play on some terms. All in a back pocket in your phone, connecting the carnival of Trinidad and Tobago and doing work in the region. And I spoke about patents. You know, this is a workshop, and I'm sorry, I have 15 minutes because I would have made you all pull out your laptops and do some work where we can search for any technologies, right? Through understanding patent information services, right? So Google patents, I went to Google patents, the simplest one, and I put in patents for electronic monetary system. We're going to be talking about that this week, right? So as simple as Google patents, what the search found? Methods and systems for exchanging and transferring various forms of value. You pulled up these search reports. And if you use some of the pattern databases that IP offices can teach, then you can actually find any technology. If it's not protected in the region or in the country, you can actually use some of this technology. So this is what underpins IP, very importantly. I remember once a young lawyer said, well, you don't practice law. And I said, well, don't you go in the court every day and you argue American sign on it for your injunction? And she said, yes. And I said, well, that's a patent case, right? Okay, so very important intellectual property, right? The air we breathe. So EPC, right? European patent applications. You pull up the different FinTech, the different owners, and it tells you so much about what's happening in this environment of e-commerce, right? Yeah. And so electronic monetary system for time, I'm going to leave everybody to read that. It's quite a bit, but in an abstract for a patent, it's very important to describe what it is, right? And then you look at these, these different um, areas. So patents, what it protects, not an acronym. It must be novel. It must have an inventive step. It must have usefulness, you know? I don't want to have a patent for a parachute on one's head. Wouldn't be very useful, you know? Just take off the head, right? So... When you think about what a patent is, you know, an exclusive right granted for an invention, which is a product or process in general, a way of doing something. Is it hard? It can be sometimes, but sometimes you have many great examples. So speeding along, because I've got five minutes on my car insurance left, you know, I just want to highlight some personalities because, you know, let's bring this alive further. Rona Eastman Jack is a seamstress in Tobago, Susulans, she was able to get protection for this collapsible ruler, the Udazzle ruler that you see on the screen. And she was able to get patent protection through an MOU that the government of Trinidad Tobago has with Chile as one of the international patent search and examination authorities, bringing the cost of IP down. If it's one thing as legislators we have to look at, e-services, bringing the cost of these things down, bringing it to our SMEs, and showing how it's not a legal construct from 20 years ago in firms, and then seeing how it can be effective. We have moved from 100% paper filing to 98% online filing, of which the majority are local SMEs, women, and others, because we demystify the IP system. And that is through no small feat of a fantastic legal team as it then was of the PS Barrow, Ms. Bashti Maharaj, that has continued with Solange and, and others driving us forward and seeing the vision. So in my three minutes, you know, how does it impact us? Look, 5% of the GDP, and in many other Commonwealth countries, comes from the creative industries, comes from digital trade, comes from our music, our language, our culture, our traditional knowledge, our brands, and when we can really use IP to protect this, ring fence it, that is 5% of jobs. And it survives even in the worst of times like the pandemic. Whether it was Jamaica came in at 5% with its rich cultural heritage, or Trent Tobago, St. Vincent, this is what we have to look at in terms of economic diversification. You know, ministries of innovation and stuff pushing the way forward. So, and this is a further breakdown of how it impacts. When you map the Trinidad and Tobago Carnival, it's gonna happen in a week's time. You map all the other carnivals worldwide. You map our creative um, festivals, you see how it contributes, right? So, how now an intellectual property office can really unlock this potential? You have, all of us have industrial property systems, 
where it's online, you can file, and you have the potential to build out. St. Vincent and the Grenadines has now gone further with services in the cloud. Trinidad and Tobago is following with IP services in the cloud. You know, then there's the WIPO publish for filing online, WIPO file and others. So it is amazing. Long ago, we had to look at books. Now we can just accept hundreds of marks in a day. I sit with my examiners in a, what I call an intellectual property panchayat. And we sit, you understand that? Yes. And yes, very commonwealth term. And, and we just go through files and accept. And what that does, it multiplies and brings confidence to your offices because you can get things done 10 times faster than the traditional people we. So it's one thing to look at. We have to modernize because this is serious money that we sit on, right? And these are, this is what I spoke about earlier. This is the potential. The IP office of Trinidad and Tobago went from 5.4 million to 10 million in two years during the pandemic, unlocking this. Yeah, we are revenue earners and we support your, the global economy of our legislators. And even in this conference at D3, if I remember, there's talk about ADR and how you can unlock the digital divide because conflict is money time. Lawyers make more money, yes. But imagine mediation. There's, an, there's the WIPO Mediation Center to deal with these disputes, franchising and fintech and patents and all of those things, all online at some of the cheapest rates. We should be looking at this to support our domain name disputes and other areas, right? Intellectual property for business in my 10 seconds left, right? The IP diagnostics for SMEs. How powerful if we utilize the power of our SMEs, put in regulations for online filing, online systems, as these regulations show you, not rocket science, right? All of these that I'm going to leave, and very importantly, unlock the power of our treaties through trips, the Madrid, the Hague, the Marrakesh, the Beijing, and all of these things that Mr. Khan looking at me with the time going, here it is. So with that said, the global uh, route to global branding, this is what the conversation is about. Global branding for entrepreneurs, Trinidad and Antigua. And I, I, I end with Khan Khan and our attorney general with WIPO's representative. And so I am here to take, am I allowed questions? Yeah. Reagan, so thank you as always for an innovating presentation. And um, I'd just like to give one person in the audience the lucky question, because we just have time for one question. Yes. I wish I had more time as well. I think you just, um, if you could introduce yourself and just speak into the microphone. My name is Mohamed Oyes and I work at the Commonwealth of the Caribbean. Uh, so what is the Caribbean view on prior informed consent, benefit sharing and uh, traditional knowledge? Beautiful question. You know, Pakistan, West Indies, fantastic collaboration on in the cricket field. Yeah. So let, let me be quick as, because as a country or maybe as a region, are you preparing any database of traditional knowledge? Yes. So okay, there's several. You know, I I speak. I didn't I, I didn't have time, but you know, when when you look at a repo in the Commonwealth, what they've done with regional IP systems, with the, the manual protocol and all those kind of systems where now there's more regionalism and that's where we have to unlock article 66. It speaks to industrial property collaboration at the regional level. For CARICOM, to answer your question, the heads of IP and the technocrats are currently engaged in putting those provisions into a Caribbean patent convention, which we hope will be finalized in the next year. We also just settled Caribbean copyright management organization regulations. We're also looking at the feasibility of a Caribbean trademark office and these things. So there's a lot of work going on at the, at the CARICOM level, but certainly in the patents, that's where you can unlock the regional patent, which should be very useful because it's jurisdictional. And if you look at prior informed consent, where very importantly, traditional knowledge and these things, there is a balancing act between that, the prior art, the need to exploit, but also to protect the interests of our, you know, um, traditional persons. 
craftsmen, all the different um, ideas. So it is being given full attention. And you know, and, and you know, I would mention the work of Dr. Marcus Goh in that respect. Um, when in the Kingston Ministerial in 2018, there was a lot of work that happened to make sure that PIC and these things could find a place in a convention at the regional level. At the international level, of course, it you know the IGC goes to a diplomatic conference. We all participated in that and celebrated that in the Commonwealth in, in June last year, uh, looking at how we can have an international instrument to protect these areas. Um, and with that said, I wanna thank everyone. Remember what I've said, take our SMEs forward with, with e-commerce and these, it is quite possible, it can be done. And we owe it to our artists. I didn't get time to even talk about IP collateralization, using that the, the worth of your copyrights to help our artists in the Caribbean and their wintry years. It is so important and there are projects in Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago through the IDB looking at how we can collateralize. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Regan, for a very, very vibrant and thought-provoking presentation.